But in Sonic, and but those don't count. We play Hype Sonic. Oh, the zombie skin. Damn. Oh, he's getting serious. Yeah. Both both of these players really kind of looking to bring out the best out of each other. We got grand finals. DD's on the loser side. Got to do a reset if he wants a chance to win. Wrath on the winner side, looking strong this entire tournament. Already took it over DD once. He can probably do it again. We'll find out. Just a reminder: there's $500 pot bonus on the line here. Whoever wins this is gonna. Whoever wins this is gonna get 40% of that sweet 500 smackers plus whatever anyone contributed to, to being here. That's hot money right there. That's yeah. a flight. That's a flight to SmashCon. Exactly. Think, think about think about it like that. This could fund your trip to SmashCon. This could fund your uh, opportunity to really show the rest of the world what you're made out of. To really kind of put the region on your back. And Didi going for uh, Steve rather than the uh, rather than the PT here, really showing just how seriously he's taking these grand finals. Yeah, this will also go to show that if you're from around the Georgia region, if you can make it out here, you can really make some good money if you can take out our entire region's PR. Uh, shout outs to the uh, shout outs to like the twenty seven year old woman that bought my twice ticket to fund this tournament. Oh nice. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to that person. I did not I promise I didn't like look them up on Facebook before <laughs> I sold them the ticket. I'm just guessing. Like I don't I don't do that shit anymore. Anyways, so Didi trying to find an opportunity to engage Wrath here. Throwing out the uh, throwing out the minecart, just finding any kind of possible means of just Finding a, a point of engagement. I'll say the what I said last time that I saw, I think it was Rap playing DD maybe, or it was a Sonic versus Steve matchup at Momocon. It might have been the double set that uh, D DJ Don and DD played against uh, Rap and Sonics, which by the way, terrible. It was oh, hilarious, wow. but it was terrible because it was Steve, Steve versus Sonic, Sonic, and neither one of them were interacting. Anyways, when they do interact, it looks like Roadrunner versus Wiley e. Coyote. It's it's hilarious because you've just got Steve dropping anvils and minecarts and like TNT and dynamite everywhere, and then you've got Roadrunner Sonic just running all around, dodging out of stuff, basically making DD use his weapons against him. But here's the thing: what we learned is that Wily e. Coyote actually has great tools if you're using them for defense and you're not chasing somebody with them. That sounds like the hottest set that would have ever been uploaded to Vimeo. <laughs> like. What a reference. Yeah. Anyways, minecart coming out. Didi just trying to play like pretty defensively here and find some opportunity, some like solid opportunity to get a hit on uh, on Wrath. Two players are fighting for so much money, but more importantly, the title of best boy, who yes. wears the chillest clothes, hangouts with the hottest guys, eats the best food. Which one? Yeah. Will who? be your ultimate. Who is going to the Butterboy birthday bash? Oh, I hate how the room got so <laughs> quiet after that. <laughs> it's quiet in here. Not something you expect yeah. in the grand finals, but I guess it is Steve Sonic. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's a hot match for, for sure. And we see um, Didi actually on the back foot here, down a stock. This is the most patient we've seen Raph play today. Yeah. And it's the right choice. You have the stock advantage, and you have to force Didi to play Wile E. Coyote like the cartoon, attacking Roadrunner. And you know how that works out. Not well. There was a, somebody actually, you know that bit where um, somebody draws like the fake road in, on a wall? Yeah. And then someone like runs into it? And that happened in real life. And someone got into a car accident. <laughs> This happened in, like, I think, Southeast Asia. So there's motherfuckers out here really just running the Wiley E. Coyote strats. That sounds like an Onion post that somebody put on 4chan and then everybody believes. Uh, I think it's real. I'm sure it is. I think it's real. Anyways, sounds bad. Anyways, DD doesn't have the option to paint a road on the walls he's building. But he's, he's building those walls. He's, you know what? You know, we need to stop building walls. Yeah, I think we've learned our lesson, haven't we, America? Yeah, I think... I think we're too divided. I think we need to stop. We need to tear down these walls. My favorite wall tear down, Berlin Wall. Favorite wall tear down was the Ber Berlin Wall. Yeah, or maybe Pink Floyd's the wall. That that's fair. I really wish I had more to say. It's just I, it's, it's. I'm sorry, but it's Sonic Steve. This is this <laughs> is. You said the exact thing that I said at Momocon. I I wish I had more to say. 
There's yeah. not much to say. You know how this is going to play out. Yeah. Whichever one of them has the advantage is going to camp the other guy. Like that's just that's just the game. The name of the game. They're both playing the clock. I mean, it's already been almost five minutes in this match. There's two minutes left on the clock, and both players still have two stocks left. God forbid we reset the bracket here. I am, man. I'm, I'm trying to go home. I have a job I have to go to on Monday. Fuck. You have a whole day to rest. That's not enough after this set. Sunday is a day of rest. Do you think, I, you think me, I'm going to rest after this You set? strike me as a Catholic. I am. That's a little, honestly, <laughs> it, was a, it was stereotypical, a little bit prejudiced. No, that's fine. That. That's fine. I, I accept it. What do I strike you as? Um, agnostic. I think, right. you, I think you probably, <laughs> maybe you went right. to a Presbyterian church when you were younger. That's It's close enough. Methodist. I mean, Methodist? it was yeah, close enough. Makes sense. Makes sense. But yeah, yeah, pretty. Yeah. I'm apathistic. I'd be an that. atheist if I had to watch this set for the rest of my life. Honestly, honestly, I like. Uh, you know what? I'm going to advocate for Steve to be played, even if it leads to stuff like this, because you have to imagine, you have to imagine that the Steve player is happy. Yeah. You have to imagine that the Steve player is happy, even being a stock down. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. By the way, I'd like to go ahead and formally, I don't think he's still here, but I'd like to formally apologize to Shane uh, for all of the bullshit we were talking about during his match that we should have saved for this. Yeah. Oh, my God. Holy smokes. Yeah. I feel really bad now. Yeah, I do, too. Um, my bad, dude. Uh, come hit me up. I'll give you, like, $20. <laughs> I'm not going to give you shit, but I will say it's from both of us. Yeah. Exa Christmas yeah. gift style from the family. Exactly. That's like a that's a Fortnite gift card. That's some V bucks. There you go. It's, it's like when my wife gets all of our friends' presents and then says that it's from both of us, but oh, she's just smart. way better at giving gifts yeah, than yeah, I am. Yeah. But she's really nice and puts my name on the card too. Honestly, um, getting clothes as gifts rocks. I I have grown into it. That's also yeah. something you grow into after yeah. like I think. Tw well, I guess it depends on when your fashion age is. But yeah. after like twenty three, I think you're just happy with any clothes. Yeah, one hundred percent. Sonic with the yellow shoes is looks so weird. Yeah. What's up with that? God, I have these why am I wearing these orange sunglasses? Okay. They're, I, oh, they're literally bad. That's literally it's 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 we're coming to a timeout. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean this is looking like a Mobocon repeat, honestly, of DD versus Sonic's DD down and just choose to timeout the game. But also still in good spirits as similar I'm having we've fun. seen at Momocon. Yeah, I'm having yeah, a good time. I'm having fun. I had I got two cookies out of this, dude. That's more than I've gotten out of commentating Dota. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got a cookie. I got some water. Um, I got honestly, I thought there was I, I thought there was gonna be a camera for the commentator, so I brought my whiteboard. Oh God, I'm and glad I did. I'm glad I <laughs> that was not the case. Bro. I brought all my gimmicks. I, for any of you that have known me for commentating for like the last year that I've been commentating, my thing is that I have like visual elements. I have a whiteboard that I like to write and draw on and show between sets. I also brought like sunglasses and a headband. Like I was really ready, and there's no camera. So honestly, probably for the best, better experience for everybody here. Mm -hmm. If you don't have to see my ugly mug and. Unfortunately, you're also deprived of Seb's beautiful face and hair. Yeah, I, I bought, um, I went to Tesso Life, and they have like this, um, like if you have like a really like fucked up scalp like I do, uh -huh. I went ahead and I got that shampoo. Oh, nice. Oh, I, I impressed at least like three women in the aisle uh, when, I, when I made that choice. <laughs> that's nice. I, I yeah. love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Anyways, um, Sonic got some percentage on him, and we see the change to PT. And I, I'm, I'm kind of digging it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's hype now. Wait, yeah. it's PT. Yeah, it's hype now. It, it, okay, it's okay, fun. We're it's fun to watch. We're it's good. Fun to we're, talk about. we're in game two yeah. of grand finals. DD on the loser side, down one game. That game, honestly, I blacked out a little bit. I don't really remember what happened in game one, but all we know now is that DD is playing PT, and we have something Whoa. more interesting. The flare blitz for the first time tonight hitting. That was so fucking crazy. Um, but is he going to go ahead and... A forward wow. throw. That was, man, that was strong. Jesus Christ. I mean, up throw I don't think would have killed, but I did not think forward throw was going to kill. I did think forward air was going to kill. So even up on the stocks, DD back on Squirtle. It's basically a new game. Okay. That spring, Wrath really does, like, love engaging with that spring. E yeah. e either whether it's center stage or off stage. But, like, that is, like, such a... It's fast. It's like a frame one option. It's a really solid. He, he he uses it really really well. Oh damn! Oh damn! Oh damn! 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. There's a bag next to me that says it's fine. Everything is fine. It's like a shopping bag that says that on it, and uh, that's how I feel every time that one of them gets back to center stage. And it's fine. Everything's fine. Rat's just willing to just kind of maintain this percentage lead, not really committing to anything here, just utilizing spin dash, just comfortable to play underneath these platforms, preventing DD from really kind of getting a solid approach. 110% yeah, on DD. The switch to PT, I think, was the right one, but it's still looking tough because Wrath is not one to let somebody get stage position easily. He'll even bait you into thinking that you have center while he camps a platform, but then uses a quick option on you that you're not ready for, either like falling tomahawk grab or you know mm. anything, honestly. But yeah. you're at too high percentage. That, that's going to kill. DD's full stock down, trying to climb his way back, switching back to Squirtle. Gonna oh. try to get that 70% mark and then switch back to Ivysaur ideally. But if you hit the 70% mark yourself, you're switching to Ivy. Yeah. Damn. I yeah, just... here's the switch, I think. Oh, he oh. doesn't. He air dodges down trying to catch the ledge, but Wrath is ready for it. Gets the F smash. Dominant game two for Wrath. Looking very close in the first stock, but Wrath didn't need much time to adjust. Yeah, no, I think Wrath just is kind of staying on the same game plan here. Um, I feel like. It's it's feeling pretty standard for him right now, yeah. which is like you have to kind of figure out a way to kind of undermine that stability. Right. You know, if you're gonna go ahead and light, no, y'all aren't gonna believe this. Y'all aren't gonna believe oh. this. Oh, yo, Pac-Man! We got Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Not even Game and Watch. We have Pac-Man coming out. What? So okay, I I don't know anything about Pac-Man. Uh. I don't know how this matchup is. I have to imagine that. So DD likes to do this thing where he picks characters. Like if he's like really behind, he just picks a character he thinks will be a better matchup. Yeah. Or like a really annoying cheese character. And I think Pac-Man could be both or either. Um, oh, he's definitely a cheese character. Fire Hydrant is definitely annoying to deal with. <laughs> he's no, that's he's a... planking with Hydrant Galaga. Dude, that's a safety hazard. That's a safety hazard, man. We can't have that on stream. We can't be showing. Do you know how much that is as a fine here in the state? That's a two thousand dollar fine in the state of Georgia. That's great. Which part? The the fact that the hydrant is exposed like that and it's like uh, firing off water. Yeah. Not good. Honestly, not good. But it's you know what? It, it may be good for Didi though because it's gonna it's kind of giving him a good positional advantage, really preventing um, Wrath from like just freely just kind of spin dashing in. But that's like two thousand dollars. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I'm trying to get hype again, but this is uh, you know it's it's I'm I, I if we just count the safety violations that are happening here, I think that's pretty that's a pretty interesting dimension to it because obviously we have like unauthorized air um, there's unauthorized air travel with the uh, with the Galaga item. He yeah. doesn't have his pilot's license. No. Also, the uh, air transit, air, air traffic controller doesn't know about that that aircraft. That's true. You know? Probably. Or like, like Hartsfield Jackson is one of the busiest airports in the entire world. True. So. So after Galaga goes away, Rat seems to like to go for the edge guard even over the hydrant, which is great. But they're just kind of trading low percentages here, and I can't help but think this one's going to time as well. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. That doesn't really stop Wrath from, like, feeling the impetus to go in, which I feel like he definitely has the advantage in. He does not feel like he's going to get punished whatsoever by uh, spin dashing in. Now I understand what Didi was talking about. He's like, you know what? Maybe we should consider banning Sonic over Steve. How do you feel about that? Uh, um, yeah, I don't think so. I think that there are enough characters that have ways to deal with Sonic. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Steve, Steve too, but the difference is that Steve just has infinite options, some of which break the game. So Whoa. like, I don't think that you, we need, I don't think we need to ban either. I mean, that's my hot take. I don't, I don't think I don't Steve like, I don't like be banning banned. characters. No. I like hyper buffing them. No, cause then you get Dragon Ball Fighters and that game's dead. No. Oh. Dead here. 
It's dead everywhere, man. <laughs> okay. Hundred percent. Nobody's playing that game anymore. All the top players from every country: Goichi, Kazunoko from Japan. Uh, I mean, Punk. Everybody's playing a different game. Damn. Oh, oh, my! Oh, he makes it. Yeah, but honestly, DD has the stock advantage. Oh, we did see that, you know, earlier with the PT too. But mm -hmm. he's got the stock advantage that I think he's going to try to hold, and he has more camping options than he did with the PT. So this is kind of looking good. This is looking like it could be the start of something, something new. new. It feels, it feels so, so right to play, play Pac-Man Pac too. too. Oh, and now looking in your eyes. Feeling is uh... I want five guys. <laughs> All right, so Didi's making his way back on stage, using the fire hydrant to kind of propel himself forward to center stage. And okay, something maybe. Okay, okay, okay. okay. He's like at <laughs> 100. I've never seen upbeat Pac-Man out of shield. It's like 155 percent, and he's still in it. Oh, he's galloging. Racking up the damage on Wrath, is Pac-Man actually the choice? I don't think Didi's practice on this character. I think that Didi just plays a bunch of characters and has fun and is good at the game. Uh, Smash is a fun game. Like, this is like, if I lose with my favorite character, you better believe I'm going to, like, play, pick, like, Bowser Jr. or Duck Hunt. Yeah, fair. You know, just for the heck of it. I know I'm not going to win. I'm trying to, I'm trying to disturb you. I I'm trying to put some fear in your heart. I like this this trampoline plank option, you know, holding at the ledge yeah. and having the trampoline make it to where Sonic can't even push up to ledge trap you is really, really interesting. And I, I yeah. think that, that's a really cool idea as a timeout mechanic. I haven't really seen a lot of timeout Pac-Man being played. I mean, in Georgia, timeout Pac-Man, I feel like, has played a lot. But... Uh, yeah, with Gray. With gray, gray Pac-God. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's... It happens more often here than I've seen it elsewhere, but oh maybe just that alone gave Didi the thought that, that he could make this work, and it already is working. That's going to be a kill throw for sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now we've evened up the stocks, but 117% deficit against a camping Pac-Man with a minute 30 left on the clock. Didi lost his first stock at 1 minute 45 left on the clock. And, like, Didi really doing the most to kind of reset this. Yeah, which I, this is... Okay. I'm not going to lie, even though the gameplay itself is kind of like so-so, I think the decision making, the cerebral oh, dude. choices yes. are hype as fuck. This is like, if you think about this game in terms of like, okay, what's, what, what is going to preserve tournament life for you? What is going to kind of be the safest option? What is going to be the safest approach? It's really interesting. There's like DD playing Pac-Man as this kind of like keep away character and feeling like really comfortable in preventing Wrath from utilizing his like favorite options, he's putting Wrath in a really uncomfortable state, and it's it's benefit it's, it's doing well for him. I think that's like really interesting to think about. Yeah, but, but Wrath right now is finding some timing on some stuff. He he's been able to get advantage back and preventing Didi from setting up planks again, and that's fantastic. But all Didi needed was that one hit. Oh, he used key and he threw it. That's interesting. I think Didi's maybe trying to respond to Wrath's aggression with his own aggression. Misses the bell entirely. I think that you just go back to planking as Didi. I don't think yeah. that you need to you need to be scrapping like this. Okay, well, and you have the stock yeah. advantage, and I think this yeah. is a good time for you to set up. Okay. But I think he wants to scrap. I can kind of understand why. Because okay, you know, you just feel like at some point. Oh, this seven oh, seconds. Eight on the seconds. Clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if this was like if this was still like at that one minute thirty or whatnot, I would be like, okay, yeah, keep scrapping. You just want to like push push the advantage as much as you can. Yeah, but. That's going to be game three going to Didi with the Pac-Man choice. That's that's hype. I'm into it. I'm really into it. That's cool. I actually yeah. I'm interested in the Pac-Man camp play style uh, for this matchup specifically. I think I think it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I just like the I just like the raw counter pick, like no warning. Yeah, just Here completely out of left field. Yeah. And then you just go for Galaga combos, get some guaranteed stuff, hold your advantage, and then go back to planking any time that you're in disadvantage. I mean, it's just good choice. It's good decision making. They're going to Kalos right now. This is like a strategy game now. I mean, the, the decision making is just otherworldly. You said they're going to Kalos? Yeah, they're going to Kalos. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. So Kalos is a really, really good stage for um, Steve. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if Dee is feeling uncomfortable. 
because I don't know if Pac-Man is, is you don't have as many options off stage to play ambiguously yeah. with the with those flat walls. So I think he was having a little bit of an internal debate about what to do there. But uh, deciding to go with the Pac-Man and try the plank options anyways, it's gonna be a little tougher, I think. Yeah, I think um, I think maybe Sanito was trying to bait out the Steve. I feel he feels like he's more confident in like camping out the Steve. Wrath. Yeah, sorry, Wrath. My bad. Yeah. I am. I, I promise you guys, I'm awake. I'm. No, I've we're. Been, it's you're good. I'm we're up, old, okay. I've been up since like 3 a.m. My bad. Okay, that's actually fucked up. Yeah, the, the, the life of being a public servant. I do this for you guys, in, in the state. All for you, all for free. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, I think like uh, Sunny, I, I think Wrath was definitely trying to get the Steve out. I think he felt really confident in camping out the Steve. Yeah. But like, um, yeah, just Didi refuses to kind of play in, into Wrath's hands right now. Yeah, that that makes sense. That's smart. Yeah, and I you know Wrath wants more of a percentage advantage than this because yeah. DD feels comfortable and confident continuing to play campy with this like very little percentage advantage. Yeah, or even at a Straight percentage even. disadvantage because he knows he can trade it back fairly reliably. He can get a good reliable like seventeen to twenty three percent back with a Galago combo. Yeah. Galago combo. But what's happening right now is that he has that advantage, and now he's oh, <laughs> that could have been bad. But now he's just gonna play again. Uh, it's really hard to set up the trampolines. I think that's the big reason that the Kalos pick is working out here, is that you can't set up trampoline planks as effectively, mm -hmm. and that was the real thing that was messing Wrath up. Yeah, and it seems like Wrath now really feeling more confident to kind of pull out those uh, those jump springs yeah. to kind of con control Didi's approach back onto stage. But I think, like, basically, whoever... I feel like whoever is like controlling center stage or whatnot, like both of these characters have like a great cap uh, capacity to go from center stage to ledge really, really quickly. Yeah, and or to just kind of keep their opponent off uh, off stage. Ooh, we're gonna see the down air come from like from Pac-Man, but I just think it's like, you know, I, I kind of have to give Raph the advantage here right now. It's just really difficult for uh, for Didi to kind of continue. This, this 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 planking uh, strategy to really kind of continue these like really safe options when it just feels like Sonic can go from center stage to platform to off stage in the blink of an eye. Yeah, and they're going blow for blow on this one as opposed to what happened last game where DD was kind of just chipping Rat down without much response. Oh wow! Wow, couldn't quite get that edge guard there. But yeah, blow for blow, and DD's looking really like the one in danger of losing a stock. And therefore, his game plan also gone. Oh, that was a cheeky little bell combo there that didn't quite pay out for him. Okay, the throw is going to come out. So DD wants to trade the kill back really quickly. Probably going to fish for bell here. Yeah, there's the bell. He, he wanted to grab it, but he was afraid of getting a homing attack there, which yeah. is understandable. I got the teaser chance coming out from the crowd. Obviously, there's some malfeasance at play right yeah, now. From number one teaser fan himself. Of course, of course. DD at 53% in what seems like a relatively like key confirm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Nope. Not quite. Okay. Yeah, it's really easy to DI the key. It's basically just send you straight diagonal. Mm. Ah, that's going to be a hot one, though. And now we've got Galaga in hand back to planking. I think DD's very comfortable with trying to get percentage using Galaga. He probably wants a little bit more of a comfort barrier before he goes back to camping, but uh, this might be the comfort barrier he was looking for. Yeah. He's feeling. Oh, he's still good fishing. He really wants the the, the percentage advantage, Ooh. so he's not feeling comfortable actually. Yeah. After losing that stock, he's got a little bit more discomfort, and he needs like a solid forty percent, uh, and he, hopefully a stock even oh. before he's comfortable camping. On Fortunately, this tried to go for that for uh, for that smash attack, just didn't pay off for him. But right now, he's like he's a, got a solid. Okay, never mind. Seven percent advantage. Is you can tell this is a scrappy game because yeah. three minutes left on the clock, and both of these characters are about to lose their second stock. Yeah. I think it's just like, um, just kind of like, they both really understand what the other wants to achieve, and it's just kind of like, you know, I, 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 it, it's hard. It's just like really hard or whatnot. Everyone, everyone here has to like play pretty precise. You know, Didi has to be really thinking about how he's going to be able to use his hydrants, how he's going to be able to use like uh, his items, and like uh, Wrath just kind of has to think about okay. After he's after he's exhausted these options, how do I get in without it just completely like blowing up in my face? Like right. just happened right there. He's making some good choices here. Oh, mm. that up air is going to take the stock. 
And now I think we're going to play Super Camp Time. I mean, he's got Key, unfortunately, which is not what you want to see. Yeah, can rack up a quick percentage, which might be what you would like to see on, uh, as DD. And so, yeah, you fish for the Key throw, but not for too long. You want to get Galaga or, or Bell back out so that you can keep your opponent away. Galaga is definitely better for camping. Oh, it controls a lot more of the airspace. Uh, but I think that instead, oh, Ooh. man, instead what DD wanted was to rack up more percentage yeah. just in case he lost the stock so he'd have more change to work with. But he just lost the stock too early. Yeah, we're seeing Didi now. He's like um, finally going for those planks. Like previously, he was just playing uh, like center stage, trying to hold that position. He's back center stage now. We'll see if he just kind of camps things out here. I don't. I think, think he he's feels more worried about getting the the damage traded back and doesn't want yeah. to take it to time. He's yeah, got yeah, the yeah. advantage, so why not hold it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I just ooh, Didi going off stage, trying to put some pressure on. Fortunately, Wrath feeling the pressure though. Yeah. Oh, we see oh, a good combo. I that's think that's a solid percentage lead, but with a minute on the clock, I still think that Didi's not comfortable. I think Didi just wants to get the kill. Honestly, I think he I, wants to end this one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think he's. I think I don't, I don't think he's willing to let this go to time. I think he just wants to get the kill. Yeah, it looks like Wrath might want to go for a cheeky kill here too, because the longer that this time ticks down with neither of these characters taking damage, the better it is for Didi. Ooh. Ooh. 118% on the Sonic right now. I feel like it's 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 rough. It's really rough for uh, for Wrath. Yeah, Didi's in a solid spot right now. Uh, just a, a raw kill or a hard read or something could definitely take Didi out. Mm. Uh, it might take two at 50%, but uh, he's got no onus to go in, so he's just gonna keep running around. Kind of hard to circle camp on a character Ooh. with as low air mobility as Pac-Man has. But he's trying to make it work, and I think it is. It's okay because there's 12 seconds left on the clock and a major, almost 100% deficit. So unless Wrath can find a, a straight kill confirm here, Didi looks like he's poised to take it to a game five and potentially a bracket reset. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay. All right. That's game five. We're kind of seeing both players right now, just weighing their options. It feels. This is some solid smash. Absolutely. This is like some really solid sense. You can say whatever you want about the length of the matches. You can say whatever you want about both players and their approach to yep. this match. But this is a Smashers match. Yes. You know, this is not a. This is not. This ain't your grandma's Smash Brothers. This is no. some real Smash Brothers. This is this is honestly not even Smash Brothers anymore. They're playing this mental game. Yeah. This like. It's really staying on Kalos, too. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's the right choice for Wrath. You could have made it work. It just got a little bit out of hand for you. Yeah. And Didi very interestingly played a different different game plan there. Maybe that was also a cerebral choice, yeah. playing that like slightly more aggressive play style, only planking a little bit, but then going for aggressive options, because then you've suddenly mixed up what Wrath thinks you're going to be doing and yeah. what your options are going to be. So you just start to get these free aerial hits, and suddenly you're at 100% advantage, percentage of advantage, or a stock advantage, because Wrath was fishing for options that you weren't taking the bait on. We, unfortunately, we're not really seeing a whole lot of engagement here. I think both players kind of understanding the importance of capitalizing off of the defensive play style. Wrath, uh, Wrath managing to get a pretty solid uh, interaction off stage there. But who knows? Like, I think, I think we're gonna see this match with Pac-Man at eight percent for a minute for a good while. That's not, I mean, we're already at a minute with Pac-Man at eight percent, so your wishes come true. Oh, nice. Oh, oh! I could have gone for the grab. No, I don't think the grab would have worked actually. Um, Didi, just should, I see. I heard, I heard Spider Man. Spider Man. I kind of want to see the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Is it out yet? Yeah, it's out. It's oh, cool. Good. I heard it's pretty good. Okay, now That's they're good. both at eight percent. Okay, twenty-six percent on Wrath. And we see kind of the scrap coming out from both players. And now we got a 2% lead for Wrath. Yeah, I think Wrath's got the download on the scrap gameplay. Yeah. Understands that Didi's going to mix it in with some plank options and now is going to play more reactionary mm -hmm. than uh, flowcharty. And I think that's just the right choice. Yeah, no, I, I feel the exact, I feel the same way. I think um, nowadays, I think it's now it's just more about like, okay, I can win like technically in the scrap matchup. 
If you go off stage, I really don't have a lot to worry about. There's plenty of options for me to close a distance and to get something really minor that is just going to help me keep the lead. Yeah. You know, and that that's um, that's a really nice game to play, honestly. If you are pretty much uh, guaranteed a win. Yeah. You know. Not saying that like it's guaranteed for Wrath, but like it's like it's the it's the best choice to make right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. You, know? you can see the crowd behind very engaged in the gameplay. Yeah. I think uh, I think Trout's putting in some some work. Yeah. Putting together always on that plan. grind set. Trout, honestly, one of my favorite uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah. Out there. Really, really, um, really looking forward to what comes the next. Oh, okay. Back throw. That was unexpected. I wish I had paid more attention to what was going it on. It was there. just more chip damage. Yeah. DD finding openings. Uh, you know. Wrath had the download, but uh, DD uploaded a new file, so Wrath wasn't ready. Didn't I have the storage capacity. I think DD also feeling really more comfortable, like switching up his options, not always looking for Galaga or the key. You have that luxury when you're on a character you don't main. I think. Yeah. You know, you, you don't. You're not. Oh wow. Whoa. Great follow. But you're not as paralyzed by game plan you think you should have. And you get to play a little bit more freely. You know, you mm -hmm. you don't know what the best options are. You just know what your opponent's options are, yeah. and then you just play around that. Ooh. It's just a freeing option. It's very yeah. interesting that that's how DD's choosing to play that's, this. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting... I think like we don't really talk a lot about how mindset really is the big skill to really master in this game. Yeah. You know, I think everyone talks about, like, okay, well, you got to grind. you got to grind out friendlies. you got to have, like, the matchup experience. you got to be able to do this and that. I really think that, like... Just having kind of that mindset of, well, I don't really play this. I understand like what people who main this character want to achieve, right? But you know, I don't main this character. Like, right. I can go ahead and just kind of try and do whatever. I don't have to worry about the things that I know. It's yeah. the same reason why people who study music theory often have writer's paralysis whenever yeah. they're trying to write new music because they think that things have to sound a certain way. If they're trying to elicit a certain mood, they need to have a certain chord progression. Yeah, but. When in reality, if you were to just play a little bit more creatively, a little bit more less in in your head, yeah, make the mistakes. Exa yeah, yeah, exactly. Mistakes are where the creativity lives. And Didi has chosen the biggest mistake of all: playing Pac-Man. And now he's playing like a you know Michelangelo. He's super well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we might see we might see the bracket reset here. What fun! I have to go to the bathroom so bad. Yeah, I mean, bracket reset's probably going to be your chance to do it. They might not take any time, but you'll probably have a good five minutes before the first stock's taken for the next. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be good. Okay. Yeah, hundred fifty percent. Nothing to scoff at. But here's the thing: when you're both at this high percent, the percent advantage doesn't matter unless the clock's at ten percent. All you need to do is get a kill confirm, and Didi is the one that finds it. That's not what you want if you're Wrath. You needed to find the kill confirmed because your percentage was too high. But now, oh my oh, god, 58% 58. combo. This, I mean, a minute 40 left on the clock. Anything could happen, but I think Didi might just look for the kill or camp until Wrath makes an overly committal this, option. You know, this is so interesting because I think everyone has kind of like looked at Didi as being like a character specialist, you know, like just being the person to go to to talk to discuss like the Steve matchup, to discuss like Steve as a character. Everybody like kind of really, honestly, just kind of unfairly choosing him to be that person. See, I disagree. Yeah. I think he he toys around with so many characters all the time. Yeah. Usually everybody kind of it's more of a joking matter like, "Oh, I'm just trying out this character, just trying out this character like for fun, like just doing game and watch this bracket cuz haha." Yeah. But he gleans a lot of knowledge I think from just dabbling in other characters and watching gameplay. Yeah. Uh, and he I think he just kinda, he, he's so young but has such a great understanding of the game it, as a whole. Yeah, I agree. I think I think he's one that type of player that because the fundamentals of the game and because the willingness to kind of try and do something different just really sets them apart or whatnot. This is, it's, not, it's not automatic flow of information. Yeah. It's being very particular about what information gets brought in right. and like gets uh, kind of left on the cutting room floor or whatnot. Yeah, good spacing, spaces out, they get up attack, and you know they have tilt as a... Yeah, but the pressure's, the pressure's on Wrath right now. 25 it's, seconds, and you've got 100% to make up. You're either going to have to get a really, really cheeky kill or three really quick combos in succession, and I don't think yeah. either of those are happening. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Oh, but this could be... No. Doing a fantastic 41 job. 41%, though. 10 yeah. seconds left on the clock, and yeah, Didi's just going to run. Yep. You also can't camp under the stage on Kalos. 
Oh. We've got. Oh, hold on. You're DQing? Ah, okay. okay. All right, well, we had a bracket reset, but Didi has decided that he wants to DQ out of playing the bracket reset. So we're done. Uh, Raph wins. Crazy. By DQ, by Grand's DQ. Damn. Honestly, bold choice by, by Didi to DQ there. I, I, I get it, though. I feel gypped. Me, I yeah, feel a little bit. I wanted to see what the mental adaptation was for the rest of those next, what was probably going to be five games. But, you know, respect to Didi What's for letting us go home. Doing? Yeah, I heard. Respect. Uh, he won. He won. He won. Wrath won. Yeah, Wrath Nothing technical won. about a DQ. Fair and square. Well, that was uh, honestly, I think that was kind of an exciting grants. Okay. Okay. Kind of an exciting grants for uh, closing out. Keep it real. Summer splash. Thank you all for tuning in with us. Uh, we had some fun, fun games there. <laughs> fun sets. Oh, nice. I am on camera this time. Yeah. Shit. Oh, I didn't have a. I didn't have a draw. All right. Yeah, uh, it was a it was a slog of a day. We had a lot of game fives in that top thirty two. A lot of great sets. A lot of really boring sets. Uh, but ultimately, uh, a fun tournament overall. I think the variety is what makes it interesting. Yeah. And that's what you come to Georgia for. I think this was yeah this was a really fantastic tournament to kind of cap off the summer and like kind of as everyone is preparing to enjoy SmashCon, kind of preparing to go back to school Absolutely. or back to work or whatever it may be. I think this was just a really solid opportunity for a lot of people to kind of kind of get the edge back, kind of get right. the, 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 the feeling back in their legs, get their sea legs, basically. Um, we'll be seeing a lot of these competitors head off to SmashCon representing our, our, our state, representing yes. our region. And I have great expectations for all of them. Absolutely. You know, um, looking forward to seeing uh, Spickles at SmashCon if he's able to make it. Fingers Don't crossed. forget, vouch Spickles on Final Cut. Um, make sure that you go to his Twitter account, X account, whatever it is. Um, make sure that you are supporting all of our players. They really kind of deserve the distinction. And support your TOs as well. Go to go to events. This was a great event. Yes, Recursion really and John and everybody, thank you for yes. putting on this amazing event. Thank you, thank you to Recursion for putting this event on. You know, June, John Asley, yes. everybody that had a hand in putting this event. Uh, thanks to me for scalping a twice ticket, making sure I could add some money to the pot. Seven. Let's go. I love to do stuff like that. Queen. I love doing evil things for Incredible. Smash. I didn't do shit. That I came here and I commentated for free, and I guess you guys are blessed yeah. to be in my presence, and that's my gift to you. If the Board of Regents is watching this, I didn't do any of that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Yeah, was that, <laughs> we, so I think that that was a, a really cerebral choice. <laughs> And then a DQ, it was just such a, I mean, what a tease. Yeah. What a Anyways. tease, DD. See you guys later. Peace out. Oh, yeah, my name's Kevin with a K. I'm, I'm Seb. Sebert. We'll see I'm, you guys uh, next. Keep it real. Yeah, see you guys. Bye.